Jensen here. I wanted to talk to the people that are getting ready to get an intestinal biopsy. Perhaps you have celiac in your family or somewhere in your genetic line. You're having a lot of digestive complaints. You want to rule out celiac. Uh, finding out if you're gluten sensitive is maybe something you just, you just have to know. You really want to go that extra mile and, and get that test. Um, so I want to give you some very important information that you need to know and you need to ask your doctor for before you embark upon this test. The gold standard in celiac diagnosis has been complete villus atrophy. So those are those finger-like projections in your small intestine and they get degraded due to gluten attacking and destroying them. And that's what's seen in the biopsy, and hence the diagnosis is made. Many, many journal articles, scientific research articles, have been coming out over the last uh, five to seven years that point to the fact that that cannot be the gold standard anymore, that we're really missing things if that's all we're looking for is villus atrophy. So there is another test that you want your gastroenterologist to do, and it's uh, an IEL count, and that stands for intraepithelial lymphocytosis. I know it's a mouthful. You can definitely go to my blog if you want to see it written out, which is uh, glutendoctors.blogspot.com. It's uh, July, and I just uh, wrote a little blog on it. But let's just call it an IEL count. That definitely suffices, and it's much easier to say. The point is this. If you think about it, you've got 23 feet of, of small intestine, and is gluten going to come in and just instantly annihilate those villi? Are, are we going to go from complete health to annihilation, flattened villi? Is that going to happen overnight? Of course not. So there is a precursor. There are steps that occur. So in the early stages, actually, inflammation occurs. Gluten is coming along. It's, it's hitting the tips of these villi, and it's toxic to them. So those cells are getting inflamed. There's inflammation. Your immune system is reacting, saying, I don't like that. So this IEL count is measuring just that. So too often, patients are having a reaction to gluten, yet they're being given a negative uh, response, meaning they're fine, uh, on their biopsy, being told, you're fine, you don't have celiac disease, there's no problem, continue eating gluten, even though they know in their heart of hearts that's not the case. But it's a restrictive diet, and if, certainly if your gastroenterologist tells you you're fine, you certainly want to believe it, and you'll go forward and continue to eat gluten most often, although I've met people who definitely have figured it out in no uncertain terms and have gone off gluten and listened to their body. But what's great about this IEL count is that it will show you that early inflammation. And that is now considered to be more of the gold standard because where there is a spark, there is going to be a fire. And the IEL is that little spark. That's the beginning of everything. So um, make sure that your doctor does an IEL count. Uh, within that count, there are parameters as well. There's a more extreme count. There is a more subtle count, and uh, research is saying that you don't want, the, the count doesn't have to be extremely high. It can be in the moderate range and, and still be highly suspicious. So get that extra little test added to, to the uh, biopsy that you're going to get and, um, and, and get the peace of mind that you deserve so that if, if both those things are negative, then uh, you can at least feel a lot better about not having, a, not having celiac. But do remember that there is non-celiac uh, gluten sensitivity, and um, that we discuss in our book, The Gluten Effect. And many, many patients, as a matter of fact, the vast majority of patients uh, do not have digestive effects with uh, gluten. They have symptoms in other systems of their body, uh, predominantly the nervous system. Well, that's number one. and uh, But hormonal and joint and thyroid and liver and a whole host of other areas. So if the celiac comes out negative, then you can definitely explore the non-celiac gluten sensitivity. Uh, but I did want to give this information about biopsies. So I hope that helps, and until next time, I wish you good health.